what I'd like to do for a few minutes is to talk about the configuration of 802.1x which as you can see on the screen here is an access control protocol. It will actually it's an authentication protocol that can be used for both wireless and wired access to the network. What it basically does is require that you prove who you are before you get an IP address or get access to a wireless access point. The process is we turn the client on and it goes to the authenticator and the authenticator then asks the authentication server to verify who the user over here or the computer over here is. This says client, the actually the correct nomenclature, nomenclature should be supplicant is the what we normally would refer to as the client. The authenticator here would be the client, what's called the client, and then the authentication server would be the authentication server. We're going to use a radius server on a Microsoft domain controller an IAS server, an internet authentication server. So we have to configure three things and in this process you notice that we have a client key exchange which means that on the authentication server we have to have a certificate that identifies the server, a server identification certificate which will then be passed to the client. Unlike when we go to a web page if, if we don't recognize the uh, authority we don't have the option to say okay I want to go ahead and open this secure page so what this will also require unless this uh, certificate is from a trusted third party you will have to make the authentication or the issuing authority the certificate authority that this one comes from part of the uh, the trusted roots on the uh, supplicant so let's get started. I've already connected to the wireless access point that we're going to use. It's a, it is a D-Link Air Plus G a DL524 uh, wireless access point. You can set this thing up in a number of ways. What I've gone to, to right here is the wireless because that's what we're going to do obviously is configure the wireless. So in the wireless I gave it an SSID that's going to be broadcast. We enable the radio. SSID broadcast is enabled. For the security, probably will come with disable where we don't see anything. What we have to do is come down here and configure WPA. WEP is a, is a weak protocol. WPA is the one that we need to use for radius. When we enable WPA, we get a PSK pre-shared key or an EAP option, extensible authentication protocol. The next step is to put in the address of the radius server and in this case I'm going to use 10.60.66.253. The port 1812 is the standard radius port and then we will put in a shared secret. The shared secret will be used later to configure the uh, radius server will also have to provide that information there. And that's it for the uh, that's it for the uh, configuration of the uh, wireless access point. We would obviously have say click the check box to save it and then we're done. We can continue. The device will restart and we can continue here. The next step would be to configure the supplicant or the computer that we're trying to connect to. I've already opened the network properties here. We will go to the wireless networks. And let's go ahead and add one so we can go through this one and we'll just call it radius. We'd have to go down here and configure it for again WPA, the authentication protocol TKIP, and then we'll go into authentication and in the authentication IEEE 802.1x authentication for this network is already enabled. So we'll go to the drop down box here and we're going to pick protected EAP or PEEP because we're not using, we have two choices here, smart card or other certificate or PEAP. We're using PEEP in order to do this thing. It also has a checkbox authenticated as a computer when computer information is available. 
this would be to turn on ports of a wired uh, switch. If we go into the properties, validate server certificate, yes or no, but what we do have to have in here is the certificate from the computer that issued the uh, the one to the uh, uh, server itself, to the uh, to server we use. I'm using the one called Ranger on our network. What I have done is download its root certificate into this computer so that this computer now trusts Ranger even though it's not a trusted third party. If you had gotten the certificate from a VeriSign or a thought, you wouldn't have to do this because the uh, certificate would be automatically trusted. Do not prompt the user to authorize new servers or trusted cert certification authorities. We're not going to do that automatically use my Windows logon name. You may or may not want to do that. If you're logging on within the domain, you could do that. But if you're using this to authenticate a wireless access point, then the uh, credentials that the user used to log on to the computer is probably not going to be uh, their domain their username and password. And we would want to uh, do that separately. So if we uncheck this, say OK, and OK on out of here, we would have configured this thing for radius in order to set it up for radius server and then when we try to get onto the wireless access point it'll ask us for credentials for our username and password so that we'll have to provide that information at that point okay for the third step I've now connected to the uh, radius server to a Windows Server 2003 uh, machine and have opened the internet authentication service the radius service MMC the first thing we need to do is create a client. We can have multiple, we already have a client in here, a wireless client. We can have multiple radius clients that are serviced by a single radius server. The, what the radius server does is takes the requests from the clients and queries Active Directory to see if the user has provided the correct credentials. So in order to do this, it's a, radius, a new radius client, we'll call it demo put an IP address in we're not going to verify it because this address is actually not real we use the the type vendor what are we going to use the default is radius standard if you have some specific type of equipment you can go down and pick the manufacturer otherwise just use the radius standard and then we'll put the shared secret in that we used on the wireless access point so that they can authenticate to each other. When we finish that we're done with creating the client. The last thing that we need to do is create a remote access policy and we'll go through a new policy and we'll call this policy name demo also we can either use the wizard or set up a custom policy. The wizard takes us through a few steps. Then we can go modify. Same thing as the custom policy. You get the policy with the tabs. Let's go through the wizard. Next, what do we want to do? In our case, we're going to do wireless. If we were doing a uh, wired Ethernet switch, we would use the Ethernet selection, or we could configure a VPN or dial-up. What we're doing here is setting up the rules for who and when access takes place. We're going to now determine who can actually use this policy, who this policy will be enforced for. And let's go into the Active Directory. We'll find a group here and we'll call this one room 108 for the group. And then we would put the users in the group that we want to actually be authenticated into this thing. Protected extensible authentication protocol, the same options that we had on the supplicant smart card or certificate, we're going to use PEEP, the protected extensible authentication protocol. And when we finish, we now have an access policy. We have a number of policies in here and these are applied from the top down. So the one that we just created will be the first one applied. The only time that becomes significant if you have users who have multiple policies and one of them may prevent something from happening. You would then 
want to get them in the correct order. So you may have to pay attention to that. The properties of this thing, what we have set of policy conditions, and what that says if we're wireless, IEEE 802.11, and the Windows group matches car group room 108, then we're going to grant access. We could either grant access or deny access. If we wanted to modify, add conditions, delete conditions, or edit the conditions, we could do that here. We can also edit the policy, dial in constraints, minutes the user can remain on time, a number of options here. The IP, if we wanted to uh, modify something about the IP addressing, in our case we're not going to do that if because we're just authenticating these users. This would be if we were using it as a VPN and we needed to give out addresses. Multi-link, if we had multi-link modems, not an issue there. The advanced service type is a radius standard framed is what we're using. Encryption, we're going to, in this case, we'll start trying to negotiate or the systems will try to negotiate the highest level encryption and work their way down. In authentication, we're going to have EAP and we pick EAP, protected EAP. And when we edit this thing, we get the option of picking the, the uh, certificate that we're going to use. In this case, I'm going to use a self-issued by Ranger, ranger.cargo.edx, because I then put, the, uh, put it on the, the uh, computer as a trusted authentication authority. So we're going to use that there. You will have to pick the certificate that you want to use so that you'll have the correct certificate and you'll have the correct authentication or trusted authentication, trusted certificate authority on the supplicant. When we OK and OK and we're done. We now should be able to use this in order to control access to our wireless access point. And only users with valid usernames and passwords in this active directory will be able to authenticate to our wireless access point. That should take care of the step-by-step -step how to or demo of how to configure the 802.1x authentication protocol on a wireless access point. The process is very similar on a wired switch. The only difference would be the actual configuration of the switch itself. The things would be specific and that would be based on the vendor.